Do you want to learn more on how to put money to work in regenerative food and agriculture? Follow our video course via investing in regenerativeagriculture.com slash course or in the links below. Now on to the podcast. Welcome to another episode of Investing in Regenerative Agriculture, Investing as if the Planet Mattered, a podcast show where I talk to the pioneers in the regenerative food and agriculture space to learn more on how to put our money to work to regenerate soil, people, local communities and ecosystems while making an appropriate and fair return. Why am I focused on soil and regeneration? Because so many of the pressing issues we face today have their roots in how we treat our land, grow our food and what we eat. And it's time that we as investors, big and small and consumers, start paying much more attention to the dirt slash soil underneath our feet. Before we get started, I've been recording these interviews next to my day job and I will definitely continue to do so and release about an episode a month. But at the same time, I would love to take this further, share more interviews. There are many more stories to share on investing in regenerative food and agriculture. More depth, improve the quality, maybe even doing some video series. So I started a Patreon community, which makes it easy to support creators like myself. If these podcasts have been of value to you, and if you have the means, I invite you to support me and make this happen. For more information, please find the link to my Patreon account in the description below. And now, without further ado, the interview. Enjoy! Welcome to Investing in Regenerative Agriculture, Investing as if the Planet Mattered. In these interviews, I'm talking to people who are scaling up the regenerative agriculture sector, either by increasing the inflow of investment capital or by scaling up the enterprises on and in the ground. And by doing so, exploring what it means to be an impact investor in regenerative agriculture. Why am I focused on regenerative agriculture? Because the roots of so many of the issues we're facing in the world today can be found in agriculture. From droughts, migrant flows, obesitas, social issues, water wars, climate change, hunger, they all have a connection to how we treat the land, grow food and what we eat. I hope you will enjoy this interview as much as I did making it. If you have any comments, please share them on SoundCloud or Twitter. And if you think this content is relevant or interesting for someone else, please feel free to share the interview. You're going to listen to an interview with Martijn Blom, an entrepreneur turned impact investor who now focuses most of his attention on food companies in southern Africa. We discuss his journey, the fight against maize monocultures in Malawi and Zimbabwe, fancy tea companies and his newfound passion for soil. Enjoy! Welcome to Investing in Regenerative Agriculture, Investing as if the Planet Mattered. I'm Koen van Zijen, your host. Today I'm talking to Martijn Blom. Senior Manager, Investor Relationships at Hivos Impact Investment, the impact investment arm of a large Dutch NGO. Their Hivos Food and Lifestyle Fund is focused at making investments into food companies in Southern Africa. Welcome, Martijn. Thank you, Kuhn. So, to start with a personal question, how does an entrepreneur end up in making investments into food companies in Southern Africa? Um, I, I started up years ago as, a, as an ent- entrepreneur, and uh, while doing that, I you could say fell in love with the power of entrepreneurship to create things and not just to create economical value, but also to create impact value. And after I was able to sell my company, um, I started to get involved into investment. Uh, in first instance, just in any startup that I thought could be, uh, that I could, could add value to, that I could help uh, scale. Um, but growing more and more into into impact investments because uh, some of the companies we we had were like selling water filters to the bottom of the pyramid or or, or even supporting music musical artists in uh, in Africa to record good records um, and actually these companies were doing better and um, uh, were giving me more uh, satisfaction uh, than companies that were just creating an app in the Netherlands. And um, yeah, by that way, I got involved into impact investment and even more understood about how you could change society, change the environment for the better, also for the worse, but in in the case of the companies I invested in for the better. And and that way actually gradually rolled into um, investing in food entrepreneurs and and understanding more about uh, the problems in the food sector and the things that could be changed there. And uh, together with HIVOS that has a, a, a long lasting uh, reputation on, on supporting food entrepreneurs and whole food, food ecosystems, started to invest in food entrepreneurs. 
And and can you describe a bit what what's your role at the at Hevos Impact Investments? How did that start? Because you actually helped them set it up, and and what the Food and Lifestyle Fund is is focused on. Yes, of course. Um, Hevos back in the days was looking out for uh, getting involved into impact investment. Uh, they wanted to innovate and find new ways on how they could reach their goals. And uh, uh, impact investment was one of the, D- the ideas that they were exploring. And I got into touch with Hivos at about the same moment that I realized that investing directly into companies in the developing world was what I liked and what I did best and, and, and where I had where I had most passion for, but also having trouble to actually coach the entrepreneurs on such a distance and uh, w- wanting to make a bigger impact, wanting to make a bigger, create a bigger portfolio than I was able to make uh, by myself together with my business partner at the time. So when I decided I wanted to get involved in investment in more a fun type structure, Hivos was coming with me and they, they were saying, yeah, we, we, are, we are looking into impact investment. How could we and should we? And those two moments kind of came together at a, at a certain moment as it, uh, as it happens. So we helped uh, Hivos, we advised them on how they could set up, a, set up an impact fund. And then we implemented that. And uh, when I helped uh, design and build the house, I wanted to live in it as well. So I'm now together with Jaap Spreeuwenberg, uh, part of the main team of Hivos, uh, Hivos Impact Investments. Uh, Jaap is uh, our CEO, he's mostly related to all the reporting towards uh, Hivos the Foundation, uh, as well as uh, monitoring and, and, and managing the, the investment process. And my role is more on the investor side because of my background in the Investors Club and Network of Business Angels in the Netherlands and, and wider in the whole network of, uh, of impact investors. And that's how we together uh, are building this uh, this organization right now and and some because you've you set up two different funds one of them is the food and lifestyle fund what's the the theory of change with the the investment thesis of of that fund we want to invest in early stage companies post revenue pre-scale exactly that level of companies that we've invested in that i've invested in before when i was active more as a business angel uh, in the food sector uh, where we aim for four types of impact. Uh, the obvious one when you're investing in, uh, in countries like uh, South Africa and Zimbabwe uh, is that we want to create more and better and more diverse jobs, work floors. Uh, so we both look to the growth of the type of jobs, we look, both look to the growth of the number of jobs, we look to the quality of the types of jobs, we look to the people that are employed and we look to the to the diversity of, uh, of the people that we employ. And the other three are on, uh, more on content, uh, content and on food. And we aim to resolve uh, uh, three problems that are widespread in, uh, in Africa. One is food loss. So, and the, the second is more on uh, bringing closer together the, the producers with the, with the market. So making it able for retailers to uh, communicate with smallholder farmers so that uh, we have one app for example, that's called uh, Green Fingers Mobile that really brings together the retailers in the, in the bigger markets in South Africa with smallholder farmers in, for example, Malawi and Mozambique uh, to source, to make it easier for the retailers to source their products uh, uh, from the hinterland and actually getting better prices for the, for the, for the smallholders in the backland. But you could also think tracking devices or stuff like, uh, stuff like that. Um, the other two things that we... Uh, uh, the, Two ways of, that we look to make impact are more more geared towards uh, uh, regenerative, I guess, uh, which is uh, soils. We want to help create better soils. So on the one hand, preventing soils to de- uh, degradate, and the second thing is actually support soils to get uh, to get better by actually investing in companies that source product or sell product or bring to market products that could help create better soils in the in the beginning of the cha- in the beginning of the chain and the second thing is that we want to create more healthier diets locally so bring back uh, authentic and local uh, food and local grains and uh, kind of fight the monocultures that are uh, more and more uh, in case in this uh, in this in these countries 
So what I, what I heard, for example, is that in Malawi, 80%, 80% of all the vegetables that are being produced on the land is mice, 80%. And uh, uh, this is why there are a wide number of varieties, local varieties of grain that are kind of got lost in the, in the, in the, in, over the years. And by creating more awareness on healthy foods and nutrients, but not just uh, telling it uh, in the NGO way, it's better you eat these kind of grains, but actually create companies that make a brand that people want to go for because they want to create a better and more healthy life for themselves um, in that way uh, promoting uh, and making local grain sorts uh, cool again if you will which is a movement that that is seem to be happening all around the world how do you i mean you, you alert to it a bit how do you create a company or how do you invest in a company around that for instance in in malawi on, on local cool grains or cool seeds I, th I think if, you, if you're on the retail side of things, which we do, which is the one end of what we look at, then, then I, I, you see those movements uh, grow, particularly in the cities. So the big cities in South Africa, Cape Town and Johannesburg, but also to a lesser extent in Zambia and Lusaka or in, uh, in Zimbabwe, in um, Harare. You see these movements of more healthy, more uh, uh, biological, more organic uh, food movements come up as well. You see the you see the companies providing those vegetables as well. So it's on the on the on the retail side, it's investing in those companies that are managing to make green food, organic food cool again, and actually that way creating a market. So it becomes more than just this is organic and healthy. It becomes it's organic and healthy and cool. Uh, uh, that's the type of companies we want to support because we think and we believe uh, it's our theory of change that these companies are the front runners of the change you want to see in these urban societies. Um, you're not reaching, you're not reaching uh, um, uh, everybody uh, with, this, uh, with this movement. So you, what you see is that a lot of these companies are also talking to more government programs. Uh, definitely, if you look at the more poor countries like Zimbabwe and, and Malawi to that extent, and it's, a, it's about school feeding. And if you can bring in little changes into the school feeding program, so these kids get something else than mice, uh, in some schools at least, then you, you, you're making a change step by step. But it's, 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 a, it's a growing movement that we can, uh, that we can, uh, that we can scale on. And then the second thing is also, because we're not only on the retail side of things, but we also look to companies that can actually help farmers to produce these new type of vegetables, and actually all type of vegetables, but this new type compared to the, compared to the mice economy, if you will. And, and that's actually by investing in companies um, that, are, that, are, that are in the... In the, in the uh, that are providing providing stuff to the farms to make this possible. So, for example, we had a big event around seed companies, where where, where there's a lot of local seed uh, uh, companies from Malawi and Zimbabwe actually came together to to discuss with each other how they could bring um, uh, more local seeds to the market and actually increase the demand for local seeds. So, so you get these local grains back on the back on the fields again, eh? because that's where it starts. And the and the good thing to see actually, because I had a chance to look a bit into their economics uh, uh, in the past uh, in the past weeks, is that these companies are, are rather big. They are in, in in revenue. They are already a lot bigger than uh, than many of the the many of the startups and the innovative companies that we have looked at. Um, on the other hand, comes that you see that there is some lack of knowledge in some of these companies in order how can they how can they scale so they have a decent business on a certain level that is already quite uh, respectable but they have been on that level for for many years and they if you ask if you ask questions on on how they strategize their their grow to the future which i think in this case is really important that these companies can scale because only then you can create uh, you can in malawi for example say that uh, that's not 20% that is uh, grown by local uh, uh, vegetables or local grains, but you can make that uh, 30 or 40% and even go up. That, that for that to happen, it needs the companies to scale. But if you ask questions about their strategizing that, there's still a lot of uh, 
silence, I would say. Uh, th these people rather don't answer than say they don't know. So uh, uh, there's, a, there's a big challenge for us, uh, for us uh, in, in that type of companies and investing in that type of companies. And a huge opportunity, I mean, yes. because this event was organized by HIVO. So I think it shows a nice cooperation or how a big NGO works together with, in this case, their investment arm. But of course, now the work starts as the investment team and, and the impact investment fund is how do you invest in these companies that don't have a, a perfect growth plan and a 40 slide PowerPoint deck ready as some of the startups might have. No, exactly. That sums up our problem sometimes. Uh, exactly. Um, and I think you can only work in these countries if you have a large organization on the ground, in our case an NGO, because they are there for a long time. They have worked with these companies for a long time. They've built a relationship with them. So the, the trust already is, is more or less there. Um, although their working together was mostly into grants sometimes, uh, programs very often, uh, knowledge sharing, these type of things, but never around investment. So there's a lot of new developments that need to be uh, discussed and and this is really a new way uh, us coming in as investors really a new way of cooperating for uh, for these organizations and will work for some and won't work for others and uh, um, the good thing is so we have the long-lasting relationship because of the HIVOS foundation we know them we are quite easy to get it's quite easy for us to get on the table and then we need to find out which one actually have the ambition to scale and to bring this to a larger scale so we can really uh, uh, become the anti-Monsanto of, uh, of Southern Africa um, and wants to, want to join us in that, uh, in that effort. Um, and that means, uh, that means that we need to, uh, uh, we need to work together and actually uh, educate, actually educate each other. Eh? So, so um, uh, we as investors educate them on what we are looking for and how that would work and how they could scale uh, together with us and how we could help them in that. And on the other hand, they could educate us like uh, uh, how they've been working so far, and 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 if if that new scaling is something they 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 ambition and and would fit into the into the local culture. So that's a quite an exciting engagement with each other that that takes investing in these countries uh, uh, makes it a bit more difficult than investing anywhere else in the world, or makes it more difficult than invest in this part in the world in a, in a, in a, in the more innovative uh, uh, companies, if you will, or the more tech type companies that are already more, more, more aware of what investors are looking at. Uh, but on the other hand, that's also where you can make a difference and where you can make, uh, can make, can make the change. And we haven't decided yet, that's the other thing, we haven't decided yet on how to approach that exactly. So it might be that we are for now also discussing with the foundation, like can we bring together programs on getting investor ready and what it is about and what all what what are the what are the, the documents you need to also provide a good investment case to RRC to actually make an investment possible and having an investor in what would that mean for them so they have a complete overview to be able to say if that would be the the, the future step for them as well but the second is it's also we also might just we also might just make that first investment to get into a company, to get to know how they work and to get to know which product actually works and would help us to bring, uh, bring things to scale together, which is a bit more risky, but uh, um, being personal and speaking uh, uh, outside of the, outside of the HIVOS boxes, I think that that would be a way forward as well, because sometimes you just need to start, start doing. And if you do that with small amounts, it's a calculated risk, I think you could and, uh, and should take uh, definitely while working with these companies. Yeah, and there's obviously a lot of learnings, learnings there. And, and to, I would love to dive a bit deeper into the school feeding as well. I think it's a an, an very interesting angle, not only because of the scale of the potential impact, but also the scale of the, the amount of children in any given, a given Southern African country that are eating every day at school. What are your, have you made an investment there? Are you looking at it? What, what are your interactions? at the moment there? What, what made you look into that? Uh, um, if, you, if you look at uh, companies that, that are making products that process products that come from grain or maize or that type of, that of corn uh, uh, based products, then school feeding programs are always, uh, always one of the big uh, secure income. So a lot of these companies when they start uh, uh, next to trying to get that product with a, with a hip logo in the supermarket is that they always also look into these 
to these programs because they can provide for these for these companies in these countries a very stable uh, uh, long-term income. Um, if you are looking into these more organic and more local grains and bringing those back, if you can do that at the school level, that would mean that people in a later stage, also when they are maybe less impact-minded, uh, could keep on continue using that product so it's because it's also about habits and what people learn to eat and what people like to eat so if if you can bring in this new organic and local foods if you want to make them more uh, common again for everybody to use then if you can reach children in an early stage they might want to get back to this product uh, when they are uh, uh, when they grow up so it's also for how do you say that for for reasons of uh, of increasing this, mar this market and 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 fighting mice monoculture it's a, it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting one the thing that we run into sometimes as well uh, is uh, that these these school feeding programs are heavily subsidized often often un based in some countries um, sometimes government based so there's also some there are also some dependency issues that uh, that make it uh, that that make it less interesting for the companies to actually create better qualities because people are buying it anyway uh, to create to, to to do the to do the effort of actually launching the product in the uh, so to actually launching the project products in the supermarket for for broader markets because if you have the based income there's sometimes not a necessity to also bring a product to the market which is actually what is what is interesting as well and because these companies get a um, uh, a more secure type of income it, it also leads that some companies are just happy with the, with the, with the school feeding program income that they have and there's no ambition to scale that further or to bring it to a next level anymore so you really the school feeding is an interesting thing for all companies working in the corn and maize and 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 uh, uh, industries in these countries so you should definitely look at that also if you're looking to the more organic companies but then you need to have the right entrepreneur with the right skill set that actually knows how to leverage the secure base of income to to use that to scale also their other uh, products but that's a bit my opinion so there's a bit of there's a lot of advantages to it and there's some some disadvantages that come with it as well. Like, like it's usually the case, actually. Yes, that's always the case. So, so actually, to make a, a small jump, because you did invest in a company um, not based on school feeding programs, etc., but based on tea. Can you explain yeah. a bit on on that side? Why did you make that investment, and and why it is an interesting example of of better processing of of interesting companies that you can find in in southern Africa. Yes, this is this is a lady in, in, in South Africa that actually originally came from media, decided to start a company uh, in the product that she loves, which is tea. Um, she has the potential because she, because she comes from media, she, had a, she has a bit of potential to become the South African Jamie Oliver of tea. So there's also some... Um, yeah, there's, there's also a great media potential on what can be done. But for us, the reason to invest in this company really is that she is able to make a very, very, very high-end, high-quality product from wild rooibos tea. Um, in that way, because she knows how to source the best quality of rooibos tea, she uh, uh, can provide better income to the to the to the corporations that create these organic rooibos. Um, rooibos is a wild plant; it's hard. It's hard to it's hard to cultivate. Eh? You need to you need to keep the landscape uh, as it is. You need the landscape up. If you if you if you cut if you cut the tea plants, uh, um, it's hard to uh, to put them to put them back. It's an it's an original and local plant. So that's all the things that I love. Um, what you see, however, is that March is the vast majority of uh, of rooibos and wildbos leaves the country in South Africa as a as a commodity. Uh, a commodity where there's more and more needs, so people tend to pick too much or pick uh, leaves that are too early. So the quality is a typical commodity problem. The quality is less of a uh, less becomes less of a thing than the quantity. Um, and actually, by by creating this high quality tea locally, it's getting the best value for the best of the what the products can offer. That's one thing. And the second is actually processing it to 
all different kind of blends with local herbs um, that create some very beautiful high-end teas and actually adding the value locally in South Africa. So if it's exported, uh, all the added value is created in South Africa itself, which generates, uh, again, um, employment, uh, uh, economic, uh, economic development, uh, but on a, on a very on a very good on a very good product in the uh, in the first place, and actually helping this uh, this lady to scale her company has been uh, has been uh, quite an opportunity, uh, quite a fun journey so far. And to look at the um, the journey of of the fund and the journey of your work, if you look at one year ago compared to now, um, what has changed both internally but also in in the wider. Um, let's say the wider um, field of, of where you're working. Have you seen a big change both in the fund and, and also in, in, let's say, food and agriculture in, in Southern Africa? Um, the, the first question is quite easy to answer. So I think we've, we've been, we are more able to create better quality of deal flow than a year ago. And on the second hand, also, we are better able to see realize and 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 also address the problems of investing in some of these companies um so both both identifying the opportunity and addressing the addressing the the the, the risks and the opportunity of the uh, the risks in these uh, in, in investing in these companies is, is gone a lot better so the whole program of supporting entrepreneurship by hifos uh Hifos foundation wasn't there to the extent that it is now a year ago and now we already had a couple of these events bringing together on a certain team so seeds and processing uh, companies from the region where we invest uh, together and actually discuss on an open level also with them uh, uh, the opportunities of uh, what we can bring as investors and what they should be able to bring in for being able to invest so that the conversation is ongoing and the ways best to address are are, are something that we will uh, that we will unravel in the in the in the in the next year um, but yeah there, there's we, we have a lot wider area and able to generate more high quality deal flow and also see the opportunity sometimes beyond uh, beyond all the documents that we uh, that we need uh, uh, for example uh, like i explained with the seed companies um, so that really changed within uh, within the fund but also changed within the fund is that we've been able to address more investors so that's uh, that's nice that's also a challenge for the next year uh, to actually being able to get the fund to 15 uh, to 50 million where we target it to be um, in the wider food system of south africa that's that's a bit more difficult um what what i've learned personally more and more and which for some of the listeners and 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 definitely for you Kuhn, is already uh, uh uh something you've you've known for a long time but it's actually the the added value i would say i would almost call it the added value in impact on the phenomenon of soil um when I learned about uh, soils, I uh, uh, and we put it in as one of our impact because the people at Hivos said soil is really important. I thought, yeah, the soil must be important because if, if you can't grow anything on, on poor soils, then then uh, how can you how can you support uh, agriculture? But th- this was a bit of the beginning. But talking to you and talking to other people that are in the in the in the food movement, also talking to the people within Hivos more and more makes me realize that soil next to water and clean energy is one of the is one of the big the big topics actually to fight climate change and but also soil is one of the main uh, uh, providers of the actual nutrients and 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 actually those those nutrients that make our food more healthy and more tasty and um, so the importance of having good soils and keeping good soils and regenerating good soils is something that uh, is something that has, has has really changed in the last year yeah. yeah it's really a knowledge that has evolved in myself uh, uh, over 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 the last year which makes me more eager to really find a company uh, that uh, that more directly can uh, can address to this uh, to this problem over the next year and something i hope to achieve in uh, in the next year so
No, that's very, very exciting and, and I definitely will check in. I mean, I think a lot of investors are looking for those type of companies in, in all different places. How can you how can you put money to work to build soils in a, in a way that makes sense both for the soil, the farmer, the company and the investor? And, and that puzzle is, is not an easy one as we've seen and heard many, many times in these podcasts, but it's uh, definitely a, a crucial one. So that's, uh, it's very exciting to, to follow that. And, and so for, to put your investor or also your entrepreneur hat on, actually, what, what do you see as, as the two or even one, the most important barriers for, for investing in this space in regenerative agriculture? Or what, what would be needed to, to get this to a, a much broader scale and not just the in crowd that we always talk to? I think that's a difficult one because it's also it's it's also about knowledge and habits and 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 how people look at uh, uh, look at food and look at nutrition. Uh, if you if you see see one one grain from the other, you need to be an expert to know that one grain has uh, has far more nutrients than the other. So it's 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 really about. Um, it's really about educating on the one hand and I think about marketing on the other hand as well. If you can make it more cool, uh, if you can actually build on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the healthy movements that you see around the world, that, that, could, be, uh, that could be an interesting opportunity to bring this, this food sector to, to, to a next level and, and also to find companies where you can invest in as an investor. I think on the other hand, what you see, because you have this in crowd of people, as you call it, uh, that, that is already working on these, uh, these topics, is that for an investor, you already have quite a lot of different products with different revenue prospects, with different possibilities that you can build your folio, uh, portfolio around, uh, around this topic uh, uh, already quite well. Many of these investment organizations are early stage or starting as an investment uh, uh, opportunity. But there's, there's quite a lot of different, more long-term, more, uh, uh, more mezzanine-based, um, or more on the end companies that actually sell it to the market, like we do with HIVOS. Um, but there are different stages and different possibilities to, to invest uh, in, in soils and in regenerative agriculture already, I think, if you want to. It's making it more popular or making it more common knowledge like, uh, like the clean energy sector that will be the, the barrier and the challenge. Because clean energy, everybody knows about clean energy now and everybody also knows that it, uh, the discussing about what is, what is getting you the best value for money is almost, is almost becoming a no-brainer uh, 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 quicker and quicker. And um, that's because that's because we learned and, the, and that's because the market developed and that's because the technology behind it developed and i think that knowledge and market needs to uh, go through the same the same process and uh, advocating it will uh, will help uh, uh, will help getting also the knowledge uh, about soil being one of the one of the new big topics uh, uh, yeah getting out the whole the whole thing that um, uh, now I can't find his name. The American movie star that uh, that uh, that has made soil uh, his main uh, his main concerns uh, that will definitely help to make it more popular. Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo DiCaprio, of course, yeah, of course. I mean, who who else could it be? So no, I I completely agree. I think the the movement, although it's a much more technical thing, uh, the renewable energy movement, but offers great um, parallels to what what needs to be done or what could happen in the next. Uh, few decades around soil. I mean, the, the first solar panels were a horrible investment. They're still working in many cases. So actually they weren't that bad, but the, the payback times were interesting. They went through a lot of booms and busts and, and the, the big money came in. But now, I mean, uh, I'm able to invest 25 euros or 50 euros or 100 or 200 into very different platforms, products to put money to work in renewable energy. So that market has come Although still, I mean, if you look at the percentages, we're, we're here at the moment in the Netherlands, I think we're at six or seven maximum of percentage of renewable energy on the total mix. So there's a lot of work to be done, but at least for investors, as you said, that's not the, not completely the case in soil and regenerative agriculture, but there are hundreds of options to put your money to work in different risk, return, technology, places, and, and all of that. And, and in soil, it starts to come. I see... A lot of people starting up funds and vehicles. I see a lot of people buying land. I see a lot of people looking at 
organic mycorrhiza additives that you can spray on your or soy plants that that are completely regenerative and make them go up faster i see food processing companies that make try to make soil sexy and put it actually in supermarkets and say soil matters and you think okay that's something weird we've never seen that before so there's this whole but yeah it's the same discussion we're at 0.01 percent or something of 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 the market and of the land but it you can definitely plot a lot of these same moments that are that 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 were maybe when we were at the beginning of the regen of the the renewable energy we thought we'll never get there and now we can see that theoretically we can get there and you see it speeding up you can see it you can see it coming and you can you can see more more innovative ways of financing these type of soil developments but you can also see more people that 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 have uh that have a lot of uh that have a lot of land in which and where they want to create better better soils upon that they they get different earning models as well so there are some investments to be made it's not just the products that come from the land but also the knowledge around it can help uh governments i heard i heard a story about actually in the netherlands that that soils that are better that have more organic matter work better to kind of absorb water so you can actually help uh create uh you can actually keep the 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 the, the grounds and the and the and the soils for agriculture while it would absorb more more water so you don't have to uh give back to to nature you just can uh um work the land in a more natureful way and that would also absorb more water so the, the government will also be paying to get these experiments to a next level and if you can invest in those lands that's almost like a, that's almost like a, a real estate investor the, the, the investment type they don't even be, becomes new then and then you also have people like uh, that, that are working with blockchain or with new ways of financing or or, or, or intermediate ways of financing, or more long term, the forestry investments that we've uh, that we've heard of, and if you all put that together, you can see that you can build a very diverse asset class already with type of things that can help you regenerate soil, or to protect soil, or to uh, 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 be active in a very organic way of, uh, of of agriculture that can actually make a difference and doesn't necessarily have to. Uh, is definitely more healthy and doesn't necessarily have to be less productive than than than, than what, what's happening in the regular uh, or should I say old-fashioned agriculture chemical yeah <laughs> so actually that's that's a perfect end question um, imagine there's a there's a full room of, of smart impact investors that are that are all on the journey of, of understanding soil and the potential and re- potential and regenerative agriculture etc what should they look out for and uh, where would you not giving them investment advice, obviously, but where where should they start if they are listening to this and they say, yeah, yeah, of course, I, I what's a what's an, a nice start of the journey? The boring question would be look at your own investment strategy and kind of look at which products there that that fit that. Because if you're a more long term patient investor, then definitely you just invest in the lands that are being uh, regenerated, right? So that's that's kind of. It's also kind of what, what, what an investor really wants to as his own strategy. It's a bit of the boring answer. But what I would and say is And another part of that would be to clean up your portfolio first and see where you're not regenerating soils for sure, like fossil fuels and, and none. Where you work against it, mining, yeah. Can, where you're working against it, mining literally or mining in agriculture or some fossil fuel companies that probably are part of it. Yes, not as an investment advice, uh, of course, but uh, divest from Monsanto or buyer. For example, um, that might help. You can do two at the same moment. Now. <laughs> that might help. Um, uh, yeah, it's probably the same the same share right now, so it makes it easy. Um, but uh, yeah, the, 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 there's of course there's a, there's a lot to do. But I, I think it's also the fun thing actually is if you want to kind of put your toe in the water uh, in in regenerative agriculture. There's probably a lot of there's probably a product that fits the rest of your product, so that fits what you're familiar with. So, so what we are we are doing at Hevels Impact Investment is really to invest in these relative early stage companies. That's because of my background as an entrepreneur and a business angel. And um, how can you regenerate soils if you are investing into these early stage companies that need to scale and stuff like that? That can only be done if you are if you are considering if you look at soils from from a, a, a complete organic uh, uh, 
agricultural value chain from 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 uh, uh, from soil to soil to fork, if you want to call it that way. And then and then you can invest in the companies that are actually providing the seeds, for example, as we mentioned, or that are processing uh, everything that comes from the land uh, to a product that that makes it new and cool and 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 and, and good again to to eat to eat these healthy local authentic foods. The baobab is always remains remains like this big story. I think uh, it's a it's a it's a fruit that I was actually considered by the by the local people everywhere as as poor people's food, but it had an amount of nutrients in it that's that's unknown. It has like twelve times the 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 amount of vitamin C as a, as a, as an orange. Uh, I was told. So there's there's a lot of a lot of health to be to be captured from these from these fruits that were just laying rotten on the field while the farmers were building mice and um that that's that's a way if you can if you can bring the the end product of this baobab the baobab powder if you can can actually brand that in such a way that it becomes a nice uh, taste enhancer for people that want to live more healthy or you can add it to the to the school feeding program so you can get uh, porridge with uh, with a bit of a with a bit of a vitamin orange like taste to it uh, uh, you're actually doing uh, you're actually doing it all you're providing more income to the farmers without them having to do much uh, more extra work you get a healthier a healthier diets on schools and, uh, and 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 in the supermarkets and you can create a company that could actually make uh, make quite a good uh, return from uh, from actually processing these uh, these baobab fruits so there's a lot of opportunities also within the company investments, but they are, they are, they are broader there as well. I think it's a perfect end to, to this podcast. Thank you so much, Martijn, for your time and, and good luck with investing in seed companies in Malawi and, and bringing tea to a broader market and, and investing in uh, baobab uh, powder, if that ever happens. Yes, that would be great. <laughs> and thank you for joining in this early, early Monday morning. Yes, thank you for, uh, for this interview, Kun. You just listened to an interview with Martijn Blom of Hivos Impact Investments. I hope you learned something about investing in regenerative food and agriculture companies and why Southern Africa is so interesting. Thank you for making the time to listen to this podcast and making it all the way till the end. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you have any comments or ideas for future guests, please share them on SoundCloud or Twitter. And if you think this content is relevant or interesting for someone else, please feel free to share the interview. And I hope to see you again here soon for more of these type of interviews. If you found the Investing in Regenerative Agriculture and Food podcast valuable, there are a few simple ways you can use to support it. Number one, rate and review the podcast on your podcast app. That's the best way for other listeners to find the podcast, and it only takes a few seconds. Number two, share this podcast on social media or email it to your friends and colleagues. Number three, if this podcast has been of value to you, and if you have the means, please join my Patreon community to help grow this platform and allow me to take it further. You can find all the details on patreon.com slash regenerative agriculture or in the description below. Thank you so much and see you at the next podcast. Dear friends of the podcast, I'm super excited to share with you the online video course Investing in Regenerative Agriculture and Food. How to put money to work in regenerating soils at scale and growing a lot of tasty food while doing it. Why are we doing this course? After 100 interviews and more than 100 hours of audio asking the question how to put money to work in regenerating soils, and have been following the space since 2011 and recording this podcast since 2016, we thought it was time to share our lessons learned. What have we seen in the space over the last years? How have we built our decision-making framework? What to focus on with the podcast? How have we picked interviewees? And what questions should you ask? What is happening in the space? What should you read? What should you uh, listen? What should you watch? How to approach this space? For whom is this course? You, the soil builders and investors in this space. The soil builders, people working in this space, entrepreneurial farmers, fund managers, vehicle builders, crowd investing, platform builders, ag tech companies, farm to gut food companies, 
permaculture, key line designers, holistic management consultants, etc., etc. People that are building soil at scale. And the investors who are putting their own money to work through their family office or as private individuals, or people who are putting other people's money to work through foundations, um, institutional capital, banks, insurance companies, etc. Is this course free? No. This is pay what you think it's worth. Meaning, I have no way of knowing what this course will be worth to you. And I'm very aware that among the listeners of this podcast, um, we have people with very different means. So I'm inviting you. If this course is creating value to you, and if you have the means to consider paying what you think it's worth. Thank you. So what is this course? It's currently a series of 17 videos, mostly ranging from 10 to 15 minutes, plus PDF slides, so you don't have to write along. We're going to look into why invest in regenerative agriculture and why extractive agriculture is so risky, how to invest, what kind of frameworks you could and I think should build, what to invest in, and what kind of co-investors you could find or what kind of investors you could find if you're a soy builder. Every lesson will have a digging deeper part where I will share what kind of reports, what kind of interviews, what kind of videos you can look into if you want to dig deeper. We're going to look at nutrient density, landscape design and a lot more. So what is it not? It's not a list of investable deals. Unfortunately, that doesn't exist in this world. We're really at the beginning of the regenerative agriculture and food revolution. It's also not investment advice. Before making any investment, please find professional investment advice. So get ready, get a cup of coffee, a cup of tea or whatever you're drinking. Click on the link below, sign up, and I'm really looking forward to your feedback.